everyone! Welcome to Soup Dub Recipes. I'm Mandy. Today we are making a Cantonese dim sum, Han Sui Ga. It is a deep fried dumpling known for its crispy and gooey texture. I order it every time when I go to the tea house dim sum restaurant. I'm sure you're gonna love it too. First, let's make the wrapper. Dissolve 60 grams of sugar in 255 grams of room temperature water. Stir this really well until you don't see any sugar crystals. Pour the sugar solution into 210 grams of glutinous rice flour. Mix it at the same time. Then go in with your hand and knead it until a rough dough forms. Set it aside. Bring 85 grams of water to a boil. Then pour it into 70 grams of wheat starch. Stir it at the same time. The wheat starch here is to balance the texture as gluten's rice flour is too sticky. But if you don't have access to buy it or you cannot eat it due to the gluten content, you can just use all gluten's rice flour. Of course, the texture will be stickier. Okay, it looks nice and smooth now. Let's combine these two pieces of dough together. They are made with starch, so it should be easy to mix. Let me show you the texture. The ductility is very low. You cannot use this to wrap dumplings yet because the dough cracks when I try to change the shape. Don't be frustrated. What you can do is to take a small piece, about 40 grams. Put it in a heat-proof bowl and cover it. Cook this in the microwave for just 25 seconds. If you don't have a microwave, you can boil it in water for a couple of minutes. After cooking, this little guy is super gooey and sticky. We're gonna mix it into the big piece of dough thoroughly. It is still quite hot. I'm just wrapping it roughly so my hands don't touch it directly. As you are mixing it, the dough will be malleable and elastic. You can stretch it very long. This trick works for any types of starch, so it is really good when you want to make gluten-free dumpling wrappers. Now, I'm going to add 60 grams of room temperature pork lard and mix it into the dough thoroughly. Pork lard is traditional, but you can definitely switch it to vegetable oil or butter. Don't cut down the oil amount because the oil prevents the starch from retrograde, so the wrapper stays soft and tender after you serve it on the table for a while. Now all the lard is well absorbed. Let me show you the texture. It is very soft and stretchy. You should be able to spread it like butter, but it is not sticky at all. Set this in the fridge for 40 minutes so it can firm up a little bit. During this time, we can make the filling. I have here three dried shiitake mushrooms and 15 grams of dried shrimp. I soaked them in water for 2 hours already, so they are fully rehydrated now. You just dice them finely. Combine the soaking liquid together. Reserve it for later use. 60 grams of diced hikama, or what we call shaga. The whole one looks like this. It tastes almost like a water chestnut. Sweet, crunchy, and juicy. I bought this from Walmart, so I assume it is widely available. However, if you cannot buy it, you can use other crunchy vegetables as a replacement, such as daikon radish, water chestnut, and carrot. Two tablespoons of cai pu. It is Chaozhou style preserved radish. Make sure you get one that is preserved with salt because there is another one that is preserved with salt and sugar. Don't get that one. If you don't have access to buy this ingredient, you can skip it 
or use other crunchy pickles as a replacement. 200 grams of skinless pork belly, which I have already diced into a quarter of an inch cubes. Add it to the wok and stir over medium low heat for three to five minutes or until you can see lots of fat rendered out from the pork. The pork bits should be slightly brown. Push everything to the side and tilt the wok so the oil runs to the side. Add one tablespoon of minced garlic, three tablespoons of diced shallot, one teaspoon of minced ginger, the diced mushroom, dried shrimp, and Chaozhou style preserved radish. Stir over medium heat for a few minutes to activate all the fragrance. Add the diced hikama, season it with 2 teaspoons of soy sauce, half tablespoon of oyster sauce, 1 teaspoon of dark soy sauce, a quarter teaspoon of white pepper, 1 teaspoon of sugar. Keep mixing until all the flavor is well distributed. Quickly combine one and a half tablespoon of cornstarch and a third cup of mushroom and shrimp soaking liquid. Pour it into the wok. This will help to bind all the filling together. Turn off the heat. Drizzle in one and a half teaspoon of sesame oil. Give it a taste to make sure the flavor is right. Mine is perfect. Remove everything from the wok and let it cool a little bit. Then add a quarter cup of diced garlic chives. If you don't have it, you can use regular chives or scallions. Mix well and your filling is done. Take the wrapper dough out of the fridge and portion it into 20 even pieces. Each one should be 30 grams. Roll it in between your hands until it becomes a smooth ball. We don't need a rolling pin to make these dumplings. Just flatten the ball in your hand, then shape it into a small little bowl. Carefully fold both sides to the middle. Pinch the edge to close the dumpling. How easy is that? You just do the same thing to finish the rest of the dumplings. Heat the oil to 380 degrees Fahrenheit. Then carefully add in the dumplings one by one. Keep the heat at medium and fry this for 5 minutes. The filling is cooked already, so you can just go by the color. The dumplings will expand a little bit, so do your best to stir and flip the dumplings to ensure an even color. You see the surface of the dumpling has these small little bubbles? That is the sign of crispiness. Let me show you how crunchy it is. Oh, sounds amazing. As a post, you can see the inside of the wrapper is soft and gooey with the savory filling. I can tell you that this is the best dumpling ever. I hope you give this a try soon. As always, you can click the link in the description and find the printable recipe. Thank you for watching. This video is sponsored by Soup Dump Recipes Wok. This is the wok that I'm selling and I am proud to recommend it to you as I have been using it on my channel for years. It is lightweight, it responds to heat changes quickly and evenly. It can also sustain super high temperature without damage, perfect for wok cooking. If you're interested, the link is in the description. Go check it out. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.